Welcome to another episode of the Headlight Restoration Pro, where I'll be showing you when and why you should always make band-aids. Also, I'll show you headlight restoration on this very, very nice automobile. <laughs> The Headlight Restoration Pro. All right, let's get down to business. First things first, let me do a walk around of this vehicle and check this out. 6.3 twin turbo. Uh, this is a Mercedes-Benz, a 2007 E63 Mercedes-Benz. Uh, this is a work of art. This is a beautiful car. And even though it's a 2007 and the condition that it's in, it will sell for probably about $24,000, $25,000. Uh, very low mileage. Everything is flipped to the T. And yes, check that out. Twin Turbo V8. This thing pushes well over 600 horsepower. Very nice vehicle. But uh, before we get into doing the actual headlight restoration, let's find out about Band-Aids. As you can see there, I have uh, these things that look like Band-Aids. And I have coined them Band-Aids and when you should use them and how you should use them. Okay, so when doing a restoration, you've got to always do a pre-inspection. You've heard me say that before. Uh, but you, you really have to pay attention to these spots here. These are clear coat fails, okay? Uh, see how they're already flaking off? You want to baby these and you want to stay away from these and this is why you do a uh, inspection and I had to learn the hard way unfortunately um, <laughs> you know uh, one person and luckily that person was uh, understanding um, you know, if you, even though I'm using the proper tape for the job, which is, um, it has the proper adhesion to finish surface, it's called finish automobile finish tape. Okay. It's designed for, it's not painter's tape. It's the safest. It's what you're actually supposed to use when doing work like this in a car. Okay. Uh, I had peeled off. Uh, I didn't know back then, but these things will peel off a lot of clear coat. It'll come off in sheets if you're not careful. But you see that? I fold it a uh, little piece over. You know, I fold it a little piece over, curled it on both sides, and then um, taped it on. Pretty much that folding is you're folding it on the non adhesive side to stick so it doesn't stick to that. Check this out. See that? That's a non adhesive side. So I curled the tape backwards and then taped over it for a band aid. Did you see that? And this is how you remove them there. Boom. You know, it should be gentle, gentle. And this is so you don't peel off that clear coat. So you don't peel. The clear coat is very sensitive in those areas. And literally, you can peel off sheets. So you can make the situation worse. And you should always tell the person before you do it, check this out. I'm going to be as careful as I can, but you have this going on with your vehicle. So if it happens, if a little bit worse, I mean, you know, it is what it is. You know, don't blame me because this stuff is going on or, you know, a little extra might come up when I'm trained and I know what to do with it. And I'm going to do the best I can to make it not as bad or make it um, not any worse than it can be. So that's basically a band-aid in a nutshell. And now we're going to be doing the uh, restoration on this light. This is a double bubble is what I call it. These uh, old Mercedes and some old Lexuses um, have a double bubble. And it's a little upcharge because you're actually working on two separate lights. So you're doing four lights in the front. It's um, almost an equivalent of doing a really large light or doing a light and a fog light. But yes, uh, with the Band-Aids, uh, I've thought about this and I tried other things, but that is what works the best with that situation, especially little small spots like that. And I told the guy that your paint is real good uh, to save it. You might want to get it in there to a shop where they would probably, you know, wouldn't even have to remove the bumper. What they would do is, you know, uh, sand around the areas because uh, I do things like this too, minor painting and whatnot. Uh, sand, you know, a little bit around the area to even it out and then pretty much clear coat the whole uh, bumper again to keep everything sound and keep everything protected and it'll look brand new um, <clears throat> a little bit easier to get it done in the shop than me doing it on the side of the road because he needs it all throughout this bumper and it just comes from rock chips and um, you know sun damage and stuff like that it gets weakened in certain spots uh, you know maybe he had a, a scrape or something in one area and um, 
you know, they just got worse, but it's all over the front of this bumper, especially where I had to do the lights. So even underneath uh, the lighting that you see there, or the um, taping around the lighting that you see there, there's band-aids. And even all across underneath where the tape isn't, there's band-aids, just to be safe. Like I said before, a long time ago, I had a person that I was doing headlight restoration for, and I wasn't... Um, uh, aware of the situation or I was aware of it I wasn't aware what to do about it and um, you know I came up with this after that every time I see anything like that I baby it and I make sure that no adhesive touches those surface and how I do that is like I showed you I flip I curl it around backwards so I'm putting the sticky side up not down. I'm putting the sticky side up and just curl it, boom, and then I tape it down and it looks like a band-aid, believe it or not. And you can do this at any size or uh, level that you want to do it. You can do this in big areas. You can do this in small areas. But uh, I really admire this vehicle. This is a vehicle that I would mind, uh, I would love to drive. I wouldn't mind having. It uh, is probably very fun. Uh, so much horsepower in this vehicle and um, so much precision. I'm sure the maintenance is a bitch, but everything else is fun. It's a beautiful car. And uh, even though it's like a 2007, I mean, you wouldn't tell. I, I asked him, what year is this? Is this like a 2000 and like 13 or something? He's like, no, nah, it's 2007. But beautiful, beautiful car. Um, you know, all, all vehicles outlast. Everything on the vehicle damn near outlast headlights. Everything but uh, oil change and tires usually, you know, even even sometimes tires outlast headlights. Um, but yeah, so I'm doing this headlight restoration here. It's a basic headlight restoration. Um, a lot of people believe, oh, all, all Mercedes-Benz lights are hard and all their coatings are hard. No, it's just certain vehicles. I just see how easy this one is to take off. Um, certain vehicles. I had a video, uh, this one here where a lot of people were like um, on this video here uh, with the 2k clear that was on it it was a confirmed 2k clear because I was taking it off um, from what another person was uh, had messed up or another business had messed up and burnt this guy's lights up trying to get it off and I talked to that person and I talked to uh, the people uh, who owned the vehicle it was a father and son I don't know if he was passing the vehicle down or whatever but the son, I, I believe the son might have uh, 2k cleared it sometime back ago but they for sure knew that they uh, used 2k clear on it and I was telling them yeah this is the 2k clear fast max this and that and they knew all about it and they're like yeah that's 100 they told me that's 100% what the person put on so I don't know what person they're talking about or whatever but it's a complicated story um, and uh, had a lot of people in the uh, comments or a couple guys in the comments that might know a little bit about headlight restoration <laughs> a little bit were telling me um, oh no that's the factory clear coat that's the factory clear coat on these vehicles on these Mercedes is that hard it's like man I, I done so many of them you know what I'm saying like I, I know which ones are hard and which ones aren't this these ones aren't hard and then the ones that are hard are nowhere near as hard as a 2k clear fast max coating okay Okay, and once again, uh, all 2K clears are in the, kind of in the same boat, but they are different. Not all of them are as hard as the Fast Max. The Fast Max actually has a hardener in it. And once you pop it in the can, it's useless after a couple hours. You have to use it right away. Not all 2K clears have that. The ones that have that stuff in it, it are a nightmare. The other ones are just kind of like a, a bad dream. You know what I'm saying? They're not. They're all, in my opinion, kind of crappy, but... Um, uh, they are usable, um, not for headlight restoration, because uh, once again, it's not designed for headlight restoration. But anyhow, that's not this video. But check that video out, and you'll see what I'm talking about, and you'll see how easy of uh, similar vehicles, similar years. I believe that one was a 2000 something around here, 2006 or something. Same exact headlights, just a different vehicle. Same exact year, damn near, and um, you know, same vehicle manufacturer. Uh, you know, they just, somebody put some bad stuff on the headlights and then somebody could, didn't know what to do, a less experienced, uh, uh, business and company didn't know what to do. So they called me out to fix it. 
Well, that's the past. Let's get back into this one. As you see, as you normally don't see um, two things in this video, you see how I have a little extra um, protection there on the vehicle, a little bit of um, clear wrapping tarped off the vehicle from about mid mid area here all the way over to here. I normally don't use that, but uh, this is a very beautiful show car. Okay, on show cars, I do a little bit of extra protection. Um, I do treat every vehicle the same but with the show car I'm gonna go a little extra mile just because you know just a little extra precaution you know because um, they're gonna be more anal about their car or more uh, intuitive about their vehicle and they're not gonna want any kind of like dust here or any kind of like this and that and I still go around and uh, clean up afterwards uh, and, and check for you know any kind of dust or residue anything left behind also with the more complicated engines that have more um, stuff going going on I, I uh, put my movers blanket up there as you see it the black one here yeah I put that over the engine as well because it's such a complicated engine um, I, I usually do the wipe down of the engine and whatnot because I don't do this for every vehicle just ones that fit the criteria if that makes sense uh, any other vehicle is uh, it's easier to wipe down in the engine bay but that engine is something else twin turbo v8 um, but anyhow, we're uh, spraying this down here with water, Windex, cleaning that up, cleaning that up. Always want to try to clean inside of there as best you can. Uh, in some vehicles, this comes off, but in these vehicles, they do not come off unless you take the entire light off, and then you can unscrew them from the light. Uh, but they do peel up like that, and you want to make sure you get all in there. Pretty much you don't want to do your final step and spray down and you're, you're like, uh, you know, almost gluing down or sealing down any kind of dirt or debris that's underneath there. And once again, I always clean out in about a foot pattern around the headlight, uh, especially uh, the closer to the headlight, the more tense I am just because, you know, you're spraying and you're going to get a little overspray there. And you don't want to, um, you know, you know, you don't want any debris stuck in there. And when you have those spray and the black, the black stuff gets sprayed with it, it just makes it look awesome, makes it look good. But if you have a bunch of dust and stuff that you're locking in there, it's going to look like crap. Uh, uh, also, uh, you don't want that dust, um, you know, to manifest itself all over the place or, you know, um, you know, you got to have a sterile environment. You always hear me say that it's because you don't want any drippings. You don't want any water, you know, dripping out from, you know, in between the light socket or whatever. Once you spray uh, your final step on there, you know, it, it, it sucks to have to start over. All right, getting my uh, 3M hard lens cleaner, hard lens and plastic cleaner. Uh, you know, get my dab method going here. And primarily these lights are not difficult to do, believe it or not. Um, they're not difficult to do. They are time consuming. Um, this is a, a vehicle that's kind of upcharged. Uh, any vehicle that has you know, not just a double bubble like this or a double enclosure, double lights. Um, the shaping has a lot to do with everything, too. Imagine um, how much longer it took for me to tape all of this off instead of, a, you know, a regular light or how difficult is it? Like another extra, yeah, and, you know, probably an extra 10, 12 minutes on each side taping off. It's very hard to tape off these circle enclosures here, um, right here and there. It's hard to, you know, get into that middle piece there. You have to, um, when it's circled like this, you have to pull off little tiny pieces. Instead of when it's flat, you can just stretch these long, you know, 7-inch pieces, 8-inch pieces, which make it real quick. But when you're doing a corner or a curve like here or here... It makes it very difficult. So, um, you know, it's uh, it's another, you know, 10, 12 minutes of just taping off on each side. But once you get that done, the actual headlight is is a, it's it's cakewalk. It's just a uh, semi oval, you know, semi uh, flat area. It's just like a little half an egg almost. So, uh, or two of them. So it's not so bad. 
While I'm uh, polishing here, it brings up a good topic. I've had a couple people uh, DM me here and ask if they can uh, do this step with just a regular drill. Uh, you can very much well do it with a regular drill. It's just not going to hit this crisp crystal clearness uh, with that drill because it's lacking the RPMs. Okay, You can do it and you can do it good and you can do it longer and it'll come out pretty good but you just can't achieve it because it does not have the RPM friction and heat that this does. Um, even if you can, you know, do it longer, it won't um, come out as well, as clear as this. But then again, you really um, don't necessarily need it to be, um, you know, there's different grades of stuff. You don't need it to be, you know, um, you know, this might be, you know, 10 points you know, higher on a, on a, on a scale of 100, you know, when you do it by, you know, just with the, uh, regular drill, it might be 80. I don't know. You know, it's just, it's not like a huge dramatic, it is a huge dramatic difference. It really is. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. You know, to achieve it, you do need the drill. Um, but you can, you can hit a good result without, okay. With just the drill with the polisher, uh, it's just another level. It's a, it's a much higher level. It's going to be very hard to achieve that clarity um, because, you know, your lack of friction and lack of RPM, which are rotations per minute. And, uh, you know, you're dealing with a drill, what's max pushing out about 1700 RPM. And you're dealing with a polisher that puts out over 7800 RPM. So uh, it's a time thing, it's a heat thing, it's a friction thing. Uh, you won't achieve it, but you can still achieve good results without. Um, but this is a, a different level of that with this thing. Another thing I want you to uh, see, when you see my area, look how clean and sterile everything always is. Look at that. There's no drips. There's no nasty dust. There's no, you know, goop from, you know, wet sanding or whatever. This is one of the things. I used to wet sand them, and, you know, until I started doing research and educating myself. And, um, you know, and just like, you know, people used to come out and like, oh, all this other stuff dripping on my car. And... Oh, is that going to stay? And like, it's just like, what is that liquid made out of? And, you know, it's just like people freak out. And I understand because it's gross looking. It's like, you know, a bunch of fucking just nastiness. <laughs> but like, this is really sterile, really professional looking. And it gives you a real professional feel. And it's uh, easier to clean up, less clean up. Um, you know, you pretty much just pull all this stuff off and it's already clean. You know, you just give it a good wipe down just for good measure. Um, and you know, there's other, a bunch of other things, but I just wanted to bring that up of how clean and sterile my environment is always looking, you know, squeaky clean, look at everywhere, squeaky clean, you know, I keep it clean throughout the uh, process, but it's just a, you know, it's just dry sanding is much more sterile than wet sanding. Um, check that out. Pretty nice, pretty nice, pretty nice, crystal clear. He has a little bit of haze inside of that big one there. I believe it's because um, the aftermarket uh, LED inside there because it's only in the center. But other than that, beautiful. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. What is the difference between wet sanding and dry sanding? According to a butterfly house, wet sanding, which is sanding with the addition of water to act as a lubricant, is less abrasive than dry sanding and results in a smoother finish. It's best to wet sand the final finish of a project. Dry sanding removes more material and smooths rough material quickly. Well, there you have it. I dry sand in the beginning. I wet sand very end and then some. Meant to be a finisher. <laughs> The Hamite Restoration Pro.